cleaning your aquariums and dealing with algae are probably two things that most aquarium keepers don't love doing. Well, today I'm gonna give you guys some advice and some tips on how to deal with both. So I get a lot of comments on my videos. I get a lot of comments on my Instagram posts about my aquariums, the fact that they look clean, that they look clear, that there's not a lot of algae. And people are often surprised when I tell them the amount of hours that I spend taking care of them. And they're surprised because it's not a lot of hours, but very few hours, in fact. So I thought I would give you guys some advice on how I keep my aquariums looking clear and clean, what you guys can do as well, and some, some tips on uh, dealing with algae, which we all have to battle. So when it comes to dealing with my aquariums, I have my hands full. I've got over 30 systems uh, in my home. I've got 25 down here in this room. I've got a bunch upstairs, a pond outside on my patio, etc. So I got a lot of fish to take care of and a lot of water to manage. So for me, it really kind of boils down to a couple of things, efficiency, inconsistency. So for me, with so many aquariums, I have to be very efficient. So, you know, your mileage may vary depending on the number of tanks that you have, but really it's consistency that I have to focus on as far as how I manage my aquariums. So when it comes to consistency, for me, that means spending a little bit of time every day with my aquariums. It may not be hours. I might not spend an hour or two per day. Um, and you might think that I do with the number of tanks that I have. But in fact, you know, sometimes I might spend an hour or two a day and other times that might be a half an hour, 45 minutes, 20 minutes, whatever it may be, depending on my schedule and what's going on. But what I like to do is spend a little bit of time every day doing something. Obviously I'm checking on my fish, I'm feeding them. I might be testing water. I might be doing water change in one or two aquariums very quickly, uh, you know, doing a little bit of cleaning, you know, cleaning some algae off the surfaces of the glass, etc. But I'm doing a little bit every day. The analogy that I like to use is dishes because everyone likes to eat, I'm sure, right? And everyone has dishes that they have to deal with. So if you eat and cook a meal at home and do your dishes that very same day or right after that meal, if you cook a meal and eat it and rinse off your dishes and clean your pots and pans, etc., you have very little to do. It only takes a few minutes to do that. But if you were to cook every day and just pile your dishes into the sink and let them pile up and then tackle it at the end of the week, you would have this massive pile of dishes and dirty pots and pans and dried food, and it would be a nightmare to try to deal with that if you're doing it once a week. So I kind of like to use that same analogy for aquariums. If I do a little bit a day, if I'm consistent with touching my tanks every day, it really does make it a lot easier. So for me, what that means is I'm obviously, you know, spending that time like I described, but also I try to do water changes throughout the week. So for me, I don't have an automated water system, meaning that I don't have a system where I can just, you know, hit a valve or a button or have a timer where the water's automatically draining and filling out of my aquariums. I have to do it manually. Well, now I'm not like, you know, doing a siphon and pouring it into buckets because that's just much too much work. So what I do is I use submersible pumps. So I'll take a pump, a submersible pump, put it in an aquarium and run a hose to a drain or to the sink. And I'll turn the pump on and it pumps water directly out of my tank. The reason why I do that is it's very easy. I don't have to lug you know, buckets and buckets of water. If I'm doing a 75% water change on a 125 gallon aquarium, I don't wanna be moving five gallon buckets all afternoon. I wanna just be able to turn on the switch or hit plug in the, the pump and walk away and just know that the water is gonna drain down to the level of the pump. The other reason it is it is efficient, so I can kind of you know do other things while I'm doing a water change. So in fact, today I was doing some water changes while I was working out. So I've got a gym right on the other side of this wall outside of my fish room here so I can do a couple sets, come in, you know, check on the check on the hoses and the pumps and the water filling, et cetera, and kind of go back and forth. So it is efficient for me and it does cut down on the time. The other thing that I like to do is I like to write the date of the last water change on the glass and the aquarium and I use a wet erase marker. So what this allows me to do is it allows me to 
you know, very quickly look at a look at an aquarium or 10 aquariums or whatever it may be and see when that last water change was done. So yes, I am testing for water and it is a lot easier now that I have the test strips versus the master test kit. But I am uh, also able to just look at a tank and say, oh, that last water change was on 727, July 27th, today is uh, August 3rd. So I know, oh, it's been X amount of days since a water change. I need to do a water change on this aquarium regardless of the testing because kind of I know the cycle. So that's what I do. It really does help in kind of speeding things up and making everything um, consistent and clean. And the fish seem to be happy and healthy because they have that same schedule as well. Now, when it comes to algae, that's a whole different story. And that's something that I battle along with everybody else, I'm sure, to, to varying degrees. Now, a little bit about algae. Algae is essentially, it's like a single-celled plant. And, and you know, algae will grow. It grows in lots of different forms from, you know, like, uh, spots on the surface of the glass to kind of like a, a haze over the glass, like a green kind of haze or something like that, to like hair algae or blackbeard algae, things like that. So it takes lots of different forms depending on the type of algae that it is. But basically most algaes all work the same way and they need nutrients and they need lights just like a plant would need. So the more light and nutrients you have in your aquarium, the higher likelihood that you're gonna have algae. If you reduce the nutrients, or if you, re if you reduce the light, or any combination of those two, then you'll probably have less algae to deal with. So one thing that I do is I like to use timers on all of my aquarium lights, meaning that um, I have Wi-Fi uh, timers on all of my lights, so I can just hit a switch, and um, they're, they're all, I can turn them all on at the same time, all off at the same time. I've got them kind of programmed so they'll turn on at a certain time of day and turn off at a certain time in the evening. So no matter what's going on, I know that the lights aren't gonna be on all day or for too long, uh, thus reducing the amount of light that could potentially grow algae. The other thing that we talked about, the water changes. So if I do frequent water changes, I'm reducing the amount of nutrients in the water from the fish waste, meaning that the algae doesn't have as much to consume. So by doing those water changes, by regulating the amount of light that's in the aquariums, I have less algae. But with that being said, I'm not perfect and I still have algae in my aquariums. Now, in some cases, I really enjoy algae, which is probably weird for some people to think about, but I like algae in some cases. I like it on my rocks. I like it on certain pieces of wood. I like it on the backgrounds in some aquariums because I feel like it does a couple of things. One, it does add an aesthetic value. So I think that it, in my opinion, it kind of looks more natural. So if I were to put a stone in an aquarium that's maybe you know white or you know gray or something, um, when it has a little bit of algae growing on it, it kind of looks a little bit green and brown and more mottled and to me, more natural looking. So I like that look. Um, and then secondly, there is a quality thing that, that uh, the algae does in, in, in the way of improving the water quality. So algae, again, is consuming waste or nutrients from the water and uh, using that to grow. So if I've got a bunch of algae on rocks, they are essentially helping to clean the water, kind of like plants do. So I do like it a little bit depending on, on the, the, the case. And then the last thing, probably uh, not as huge of a, a thing for me because I don't do a lot of breeding, but if I do have a, an aquarium where there are some fish spawning, I like to have a little bit of algae in there because it is something that the, the newly hatched baby fish, the fry, they can graze on, they can munch on it. Or if they're not an herbivore type of fish, they, there are some microorganisms and things that can be in the algae or get trapped in the algae that the baby fish can feed on. So it does have that benefit as well. But let's forget all the good stuff about algae. Let's talk about getting rid of it. Now we talked about the light and the nutrients. So of course, those are a couple of things, but we also wanna get it off of the surface of our glass because that is how we enjoy our aquarium. It would be like me having a dirty lens and uh, you not being able to see me clearly or the screen that you're looking on if you're using an iPhone and you're eating spaghetti and there's spaghetti sauce splattering on your phone, you're not gonna see this video as well as if your phone were clear. Kind of the same thing with the aquarium. So we want our front glass of our aquarium to be nice and clear to be able to see the fish. Now, obviously, you can use like a manual scraper or a scrubber that we you know often see in the hobby where you can kind of use that scrubber and scrub up and down. Kind of like this one here, so this is just a an old scrubber that I had laying around from, I don't know, back when I was doing aquarium service uh, for a business. And this is something that I would, you know, take and reach my arm into the aquarium and kind of wipe the glass down on the inside to remove some of that algae. And that works for some algae and it can do a pretty good job, but it's not great. Uh, the, the, the pros is that it's inexpensive and 
you can reach a lot of places and it does a pretty good job of um, of getting to the algae in the aquarium. Uh, the bad parts, you gotta put your hand in the water and get your arm wet. So that might not be something that you wanna do every day, but it's probably something that you need to do on a once in a while basis. The other thing that we can do is we can use some kind of device that stays on the aquarium and allows us to clean the surface of the glass as we are kind of looking at it from the outside. I use the mag floats. Um, I'm not gonna touch these together because one side's wet and one side's dry. But basically what this is, is there's a magnet on both sides and the glass is sandwiched between these two pieces. One has like a little scrubby surface and then one is just kind of like a felt surface. So the felt surface is gonna be on the outside. The scrubby surface is gonna be on the inside. So instead of me having to do this with one of these, I can just take this uh, magnet that's stuck to the glass and kind of run it up and down the tank and the scrubby thing will clean the algae off from the inside. And then depending on the type of aquarium that you have, there are also some blades that you can attach to them and that helps to also remove some of the stubborn algae that you can uh, get growing on the surface of the glass. Um, and they make these for both glass and acrylic. Now both of those are some pretty good ways of removing the algae from the surface of the glass, but they're not perfect. Um, I do have some stubborn algae spots that won't come off with a scrubber, even if I'm like really cranking on that thing and like getting in there and putting a fair amount of force uh, on the glass or the acrylic, uh, it's not coming off with the scrub brush and the uh, mag float scraper is not working as well. In those cases, I reach for my favorite algae cleaner. That is the uh, algae scrubbers. This is the Aquarium Co-op algae scrubber. Um, full disclosure, I do work for Aquarium Co-op, but there are other brands out there. This is the brand that we carry the Aquarium Co-op Algae Scrubber. Basically, this is like a melamine pad and um, it's very similar to like a magic eraser. So you're probably familiar with the magic erasers from Mr. Clean, I think it is. Um, and they kind of do the same thing. I think the, the active uh, ingredient or whatever is the same. Uh, the difference is, is that these are aquarium safe. There aren't any other chemicals in this that you might find in some of those other um, magic eraser products like scents and you know, perfumes and other chemicals. Uh, this is just this product and this works phenomenally, phenomenally well. It is way, way better and easier than using some of these other scrubbing devices for those hard to get to, or uh, maybe not hard to get to, but those hard to get off algae areas. So if I have a stubborn spot and I, you know, all of my other methods of removing algae are not working, I grab one of these and usually in about three or four swipes, not even that hard, just kind of like medium uh, intensity on um, pressure, kind of like, you know, when you're washing yourself with like a scrubber or a, a loofah or something like that. Very similar, you know, just, uh, it's a, a couple of uh, swipes back and forth on the surface and it comes right off. This might turn a little bit green. Then you can just rinse it off in the tap water and let it dry and it's back to normal. These come in a pack of three. So um, anyway, that is my, uh, this is my new favorite algae cleaning product because it uh, it is uh, very, very effective at removing algae. So there you have it. Those are my very simple uh, tips on how to remove uh, algae from the aquarium glass some of the benefits of algae, um, and how I personally keep all of my aquariums looking good. Um, now, a couple of reasons why I do that is because I do enjoy the way they look. I like to be able to come and, and you know look into my tank and see everything clean and clear. I'm very proud when people come over, friends and family, and they look at my aquariums and they're astonished at how beautiful everything looks. And then also because I'm on camera, right? I make videos on YouTube, I'm doing other social media stuff, so, there are you know, thousands and thousands of people or millions of people that have seen these aquariums. So obviously I need to make them look good on camera. I would love to read down below in the comments your favorite way of dealing with algae as it's something that a lot of us have to deal with or pretty much all of us have to deal with. I would also like to read down below in the comments your method of doing water changes in your aquarium. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you have not done so already, I would really appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button as it really does help my channel. That's all I had for now. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one.